So tonight, as the sun went down and the moon is rising, I think now it's a new moon tonight. As the sky is moving into darkness, we are also moving into this liminal space, this in-between, this crossing the threshold from one year into another. We're moving into this new beginning. And we get to move into this new beginning slowly, mindfully, reflective. There's room, there's a 10 days of a new beginning. I was thinking recently, like if all first days were actually 10 days, <laughs> right? We're not having a one day of something new. It's a day that lasts 10 days. It gives us this spaciousness, this room to think about how we want to begin. This sort of ramp or runway that we get into the new year. We don't always get that kind of spaciousness in our lives. Often we're being pushed to hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. This is our ancient tradition that says over and over to us, slow down. We'll give you a day to do that every week. We'll give you Shabbos. And then we'll give you these 10 days, this 10 day lingering to enter into a new year. Now there's a lot we're being asked to do in this time, to reflect on our year, to connect and make amends and repair any damage we have, might have done to other human beings so that by the time we arrive at Yom Kippur, is this better? Yes? Yes. Okay. By the time we arrive at Yom Kippur, we are ready. So, there's a little pushing in there, a little nudging. Wouldn't be Jewish without some nudging along to get us to do the work we need to do, but we have the spaciousness to do it. We have the time to do it. It's hard when so much of it is we're being told to quickly make choices. We're given space. But we're given space to use it. We're given space to look at how, how, how shall we begin this new year? What does it mean this life just lived and a life I have a year ahead? How do we want to enter this year? And I've, as I thought about that, that almost that breaking it down to the simple places, the beginning, the beginning. So what do our sages say about the essence, the beginning? What is at the essence if we break it down simply? Rabbi Akiva, one of our great sages, says, all of Torah, we have a lot of Torah, and additional pieces we always keep discovering inside of ourselves. It's more and more Torah all the time. But Rabbi Akiva said many, 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 many centuries ago, if you boil it down, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. Simple beginning. And centuries later, Rav Simcha Zizel, I love saying that name. <laughs> I think I just wanted to put a teaching by him to get to say to you, Rav Simcha Zizel. <laughs> Simcha is joy, Rav Simcha Zizel. I said, yes, yes, that's it, that's it. And as he was one of the early carriers and shapers of the Musar movement that many of us practice this, these midot, he said, that is it. And he said, all of Musar at the foundation, all of our inner work to be whole spiritual people comes down to that. Love your neighbor as yourself. And he described it as bearing the burden of the other. And in our lives, we figure out how to bear the burden of the other. But I'm going to put my self into this languaging and say, how do we carry the other? How do we figure out how to carry the other? And in Hebrew, we call that achreyut. It's poorly translated as responsibility, so I'm just going to say achreyut. 
Because there's so much more alive inside of that. Achreut, acher. Acher could mean several different things. Right? So great. Jewish people are so great. Could be this, could be that. It's, it's a word. Can you give me a definition? No. So let me give you two. There's, there's many more. But acher could be a hard like after. Achreut could come from a after, achar, so I'm responsible for what I do now, and also what happens next. I'm not free to just recap it and then go bye bye. <laughs> I have to tend to what I do and what comes out of what I do. Achar. Or it could be acher, <laughs> other. We have to hold the other. We have to carry the other. I want to I wanna stay with that teaching. Carrying the other. Holding the other. I want to stay with it because it just feels so alive right now in our world. This carrying the other. In our models of leadership in Torah, if we think about it, Moses, King David, David, Melech Israel, they are both shepherds. <coughs> they tend to their flock. They care for their flock. And our tradition says that those who tend to the flock care and tend to the flock. Ah, that's a leader. Someone who knows how to tend and care for. You, that, that's our leaders, right? What great, like, what would that be like? I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't be a leader. What tending and care for him have you done? <laughs> <clears throat> I want to feel your tending. I want to feel in your leadership that you know how to care for and tend to and keep alive and take care of. And if you could do that, Maybe you could lead us. Because what a time we are in right now. There doesn't feel like a lot of tending and caring for the other. In fact, it feels like a lot of distancing from the other. Not drawing near to other, but a lot of distancing the other. So this year, I want to elevate Ahreyut because I think that we need to hold the other. We need to draw near, we need to carry each other in this time. And I want to tell you that I believe and know that we can. That it is possible for us to carry each other. It is possible for us to tend to and care for each other. It is possible to draw near to each other. It is possible to carry each other. Each of us in this year can find the ways in our place from where we are with the skills that we have to carry each other. I say this because I'm afraid of what's happening with the overwhelming feeling of the need and the burden of the other, that there may be a choice to opt out of carrying. And I want to tell you tonight as we begin this year that we can do this for each other, for our community, for our world. When we hear the news of boys trapped in a cave in Thailand, not all of us have the skills to get these boys out, to dive in and get them out. Damn, I wanted those skills this summer. I was like, I could do that. I was like, I have no training in diving. <laughs> Stay here in Eagle Rock. <laughs> but other people who did went to get them out. And then the most beautiful thing, I don't know if you saw shots of this, if you were riveted by this, were all the people who came and built like little makeshift stoves and fires so that they could make food for the people who had the skills to do the diving. 
right? Coming from your place to do what it is you can to carry the other. We're not all going to have the diving skills, but we can come and do what we are able to. When the immigrant uh, family separations became known, that you know they were happening for some time before they became known. But when they became known, interfaith leaders were asked to go to detention centers. So we went down, we went down to the border, and we were in witness outside of this striking uh, building near the border between San Diego and Mexico with tall, tall walls with slats for windows, a very serious prison and big bobbed wire. And we were praying and chanting and we yelled out across the pop wire, Que necesita? What do you need? And we heard a mother yell back, Where are my children? And we were in that moment bearing her burden. We had to bury her burden in that moment, carry her, because she had called out to us and we were there. So we stayed with the advocates who were there and began to work to figure out how to help her, as so many were doing all across the border. My daughter was with us that day, and it's uh, overwhelming, as we all know, for all of us. And so in the morning, she woke up, and she started to make lemonade and bake cookies with her dad baked cookies with her all day long, and then sold the lemonade and cookies in the park to raise money to send folks on the border. Because in that moment, inside of her, if you don't do something with these burdens, they become unbearable. To hear the mother, to know that she was separated, to think of her child, in those moments, it's that next step, that what can I do in this place to not sink into despair? I worry for us as a community about the despair that I see and I hear from you over these past months. It was moving to watch the process of the lemonade and the cookies, but it was much more moving to watch all the conversations that were had between kids, two kids, because it was kids coming up to buy the lemonade and cookies, and then the conversations. And the kids had so many things they wanted to say about what was going on. Taking these actions to carry each other are not just for the people who receive them, they are desperately important for our own inner lives as well. I remember that week, right? Remember that week with the family separation. So there were probably like, there were many actions. Federal building here, border, there were like five actions, I think, um, that I did that week. And one of the things that made me feel a little uncomfortable was I got people saying, thank you for going and doing that. I remember thinking, well, that's a weird thing to say. Like, I'm doing it because it's the right thing to do. We all need to do this. And then there was another event happening for another thing that I couldn't do. And I found myself saying thank you to the other person who was being there. I was like, all right, I get the thank you now. We cannot all be everywhere at once. But we can do what we can with the skills and the knowledge we have to carry the other right where we are. And we can thank other people for doing it where you are. And it is also a, such a meaningful contribution to take care of the people who are taken care of. Does that make sense? That like one step removed. That small fire is making food to feed the divers is like giving somebody who takes care. There's so many caretakers tending to the sick right now. There are so many people who spend so much of their lives taking care of other people. People who are sick, people who are dealing with Alzheimer's, people who are struggling in all kinds of different situations. Give them a massage. Take them out to dinner. Sing, sing them a song. Right? There is this other layer of caregiving 
that we can all participate in doing that is just as valuable. If you think, oh, I don't know how to carry the other, what does offering you to mean to me? Well, I know some people doing it, ask them what they need for support. We are this many-voiced choir right now. And we need to sing out. But we can't just sing continuously or we will lose our voices. So we inhale and we exhale and then we add our voice in. And then we inhale and we exhale and we add our voice in. And I know that all of your voices are in and sustaining this choir. This is not a solo time. This is a time for our multi-voiced choir. This is the time to put your voice out there. Inhale and exhale and put it out there again. I want to open up another piece of achreyut, of carrying the other, and to say that there are ways that we do that inside of ourselves. Often we say, ah, this is a part of myself I like. I can connect with this. I can draw near to this. But this other part of myself, I'm going to, oh, it's other, all right. I'm going to other it even further. <laughs> I'm going to cage in othering inside of me. We can name it real clearly out there. Oh, isn't that terrible? They're distancing other people on there forcing them away, but internally many of us other from ourselves. We say, these pieces are me. I connect, this is me. Ah, this part, not me. So I'll go ahead and put that sucker away. What would it mean this year to look at the places that we have not me that turns out are in us? What would it be like to embrace those places? I have a hunch that some of our self-talk is pretty cruel. And that if you were to talk out loud to others the way that we talk to ourselves, it would be terribly painful. And it's still terribly painful internally. That's part of the inhaling and the exhaling as we add our voices to this choir. It is also that we need to care for ourselves. We have to look at that, those places that we have separated from. Usually, by the way, that happens pretty early on. The message doesn't come from nowhere. It comes from somewhere, right? Families of origin saying, oh, that part of you we're going to celebrate and delight in. But that part of you, could you put that away? Put it away and don't let it come out till, I don't know, never. <laughs> oh, but there's so many rooms inside of us with so many voices that want to be heard. So can we find those places that have been othered inside of us and draw near to? Oh, but well, Rabbi, I was good with the outside world part. And some of us are. Some of us are really good on that outside world part. I can see it. I can see how to help you. And then we struggle with our inner world and vice versa. Some of us get very focused on our inner world and say, I've got to get myself all the way together before I can help anybody else. Well, let me just be clear, we are never going to get ourselves all the way together. <laughs> Thank God. Because this is the like complicated, gorgeous mess that all of us are. Right? This is what, these are the cracks that let the light get in. So neither, neither, either, or, sorry, no binaries, and you know if I spot one, I like to point them out. <laughs> so we need to do both. If we've been in a place of doing a lot of healing work on ourselves, it is also time to look out and say, how can we serve? And in fact, that is crucial to a healing journey. A healing journey going through is about saying, how do I then make these lessons of my healing about being of service to others? And where are the lessons that I take from healing the world that I also need to heal inside my own heart? So my challenge to you in this year is to be able to do both. 
In this time where everything is being othered, it's a radical act to draw near to others rather than push them away, to carry the other. And it's a radical act to not other inside of ourselves. It's a radically loving act. Love your neighbor as yourself. It's in there, right? Love your neighbor as yourself. Because if we're not loving ourselves, then that second part's a little dicey. Because then it might be saying, like, treat people bad, and I'm really, that was not the intention of that verse. <laughs> the assumption was that we are caring for ourselves. That way, if we're going to love our neighbor as ourselves, we're going to have to do that well. That's the challenge of that very simple, all of Torah is just that verse. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself. So where are the places that you are uniquely suited to give in this year to carry another? From your skills, from your deep knowing, from your healing, where is your voice that can sing out in this choir this year? In this year of 5779, may we carry each other and carry each other and inhale, and exhale, and carry ourselves Inhale, and exhale, and carry each other, and inhale, and exhale, and carry each other, inhale, and exhale, and carry ourselves. Amen.
Okay, community, we are we are entering it. This is it, 79. We're in it now. 57, 79. Ashley, you have some announcements?